Now, truth is truth, and if you want to know the truth, I've been looking forward to this one ever since I saw the lineup. Uh, Reginald Beck from Federal Way is here with Southwest Pepper Jack Scones, and Reginald, I have the feeling these are not the scones that I get down at the Puyallup Fair. Not even close, sir. Okay. Not even close. <laughs> you got a little bite to them. Just a little kick. Okay. Carol, how about, uh, I'm really are, are there a lot of different scones? Oh, how? yes, yes. It depends on what part of the country you're from, what's even in them. Now, I grew up in Utah, and scones there are yeast bread. So, tell us what goes into these. Well, these are a simple mixture of all-purpose flour. You have baking powder, baking uh, soda. You mm -hmm. have onion powder. You have a little bit of salt. And then a host of dastardly ingredients. Okay, Absolutely. well, let's get started. <laughs> All righty. First, you want to start with about uh, three cups, roughly, of all-purpose flour. Mm -hmm. Now, you can use any bargain basement brand, but I prefer King Arthur flour. Me too. Okay. A bit higher, higher yeah. quality, and we are what we eat, correct? That's right. All right, so you have Good. your flour sifted in there, and then what we do is we add all our dry ingredients. Okay. So we'll start with sugar. There you go. Start with baking powder. Thank you. <laughs> baking soda. Thank you. Now, onion folks, powder. Notice how he has everything all measured out so when he's ready to cook, and it salt. is ready for him. Isn't this great? And how much time it saves in the kitchen when yes. you do that. Absolutely. You don't go to the, uh, the cupboard and find out you're out of an item right in the middle yes. of the recipe. That's the worst thing. So we want to mix all those gray, dry ingredients yes. together really, really well. Otherwise, you'll have uh, pockets of weird stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You don't yes. want an unhappy guest. That's one of those very technical cooking terms, pockets of weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Now, after we've got all the dry ingredients combined, mm. now we have a little bit of fun. We get our, we get our work out, and now we cut the butter in. Okay, and started that in fairly small pieces, so yes. it's going to go in Absolutely. quickly. And is that butter cold? Absolutely. You want to keep it very cold. That'll make your end product very flaky. Mmm, nice. Oh, that's quite a bit of butter, but how much? Total is that right? Well, about a stick and a half. Okay. About a stick and a half. Okay. Now, we can either go the cowboy way and use a fork, or we can cheat a little bit. Work smarter, and not use smarter. a pastry yeah, blender. Yeah, exactly. I think yeah. I would do that too. And as that you can one tell, like this one's. Seen a bit of service. It yes, it has. It has. So at this point, we cut the butter directly in, and you get an aerobic workout in the meantime. Yeah. You know, I honestly believe there are a lot of homes that don't have this even in the house. That, that, that True. Is just magic. Well, in this day and age, a lot of people do this now with food processors. Right. Yes. If they do this at all. But I, I kind of like this way. I, number one, I think you get a lot of uh, We get the of feel of the dough. Doing it. Yes, yes, you do. Yes, you yes. do. This is part of the creative process. And then if you're in the dog house from the night before, well, this helps you work out. You can take it out on the butter, yeah. <laughs> Not that I've ever been to the no, dog house. No, 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 no. <laughs> and what you want to do is combine these two ingredients to the point where the end result is about the, the uh, texture of mm, coarse cornmeal. Okay, so okay. you're looking for tiny, tiny balls yes, of butter in there. Yes, exactly. And what you want to do is scrape a little off the bottom as you're working right. it as mm -hmm. you go, a little off the sides. And just continue to work it in. We're just about done. So, Reginald, you have a baking background. Yes, I do. I used to own a uh, bakery in Renton, Washington. Yeah. Really? It was in the old Cascade Plaza off of uh, 116th Avenue. What was your best seller there? Uh, scones, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. My passion, though, was for yeast bread. I love yeast bread. Me too. We're just about done here. That looks oh, that's great. Looking really good. It's coming together really good. We'll okay. Give it a couple so more toss. Next step? Our next step will be to add some of the not so dry ingredients, such as the okay. cheeses. And I do believe that's just about I think enough. You got it. So, what kind of it. cheese do you have here in this bowl? All right. Bowl? For today's recipe, we're going to have half pepper jack cheese, half cheddar cheese. Okay. okay. You ready for that? And we add that right in. We'll give a moment for the cheese lovers to go, ooh. ooh oh. ah. <laughs> Mix that up just a bit. That's good enough. And now we want to go to our med scientist laboratory. Okay. Right. Now we have a little green onions. Okay. Which gonna are going to be really pretty in the finished product. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes a good color coordination. And nice flavor as well. All right, that's combined. And now what we want to do is we need to work on some buttermilk. I need about, oh, about a cup to a cup and a half of buttermilk. Okay. Is that and that's, that's in the, the fridge, exactly. Okay. Now with the buttermilk, 
what you're going to notice is there's no absolutes with it. Depending on how humid your kitchen is, sometimes you add a little more, it's sometimes like you add a little less. Bread. Nobody really knows how much water Absolutely. it takes on any given day. Absolutely, but you, you can sure find out the wrong by... way. Yes, indeed. Here you, go. Alrighty. you know by feel. Covers off. All righty, thank you, sir. And we'll do roughly, we'll start out with about a cup and a half. More than likely, we will not need the entire amount. Thank you, sir. When it calls for a cup and a half or a cup and three quarters, start with about a cup and see where you're at. Exactly. Uh, many times I find that I end up with a very watery dish and I just have the feeling that there was just too much moisture in it. Absolutely. Now, before we add the buttermilk, one thing we want to do is let's add our jalapeno directly to the buttermilk. And we'll add our mm. garlic, or as we say in New York, garlic. 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 Add that there. And we'll give that just a, a whisk there. Now, one of the many faux pas of biscuit and scone baking would be to add all the milk at once. And we don't uh -huh. want to do that. We want to add it in stages, just a little bit, about half at a time. And instead of whipping it or beating it like a carpet or an old this dirty rug, where you need to be gentle. very gentle. Very it's gentle. Don't it. overdo it. Exactly. You want this to fold where you it get over. This, that lightness. Absolutely. Instead of hockey pucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, they would like you on the skeet shooting range. Yeah, but they would. So we add a little more milk. And pretty now, soon. If you end up and it's still too dry, you haven't used all the the milk that's called for in the recipe, right? Absolutely. So you can add some more. Mm -hmm. We're just about approaching our, I might need just a little more. It's coming together really good, as you can oh, see. Oh, that the, looks great. The oh, color no, It's gonna give it that nice that, tang, oh, that, too. That, Absolutely. So is this a recipe you developed for the bakery? Absolutely. During long hours. a popular one there. Long hours at the bakery, a lot of prayer, a lot of inspiration. <laughs> and out pop some scones. That's a great combination. Yes, sir. I do believe that might just about do it. I asked Parker That's Lewis to give me that the, the milk in case we need <laughs> some more. Parker's That's... taking care of all our dirty dishes today. Oh, okay. And as Chef Carl has said, this is the part where most bakers end up with an Ellie Mae biscuit as opposed mm -hmm. to a nice fluffy one. We're just about done here. Is that because they beat it too much or they cut Absolutely. it into a mixer and just beat it until it, oh, that's a good consistency. And they really got a, a very strong. With biscuit or scone dough such as this, as many quick breads as opposed to yeast breads, you just want to combine them just to the ingredients are combined. Okay. Then at that point, no sense in washing our hands because we're about to get dirty. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm going to pass those off to you. I'm going to leave this fork here because I might need it again. And next, what you need is a spatula. Back in the bakery, we would use a flat spatula right, like this. Right, these are great. We use these in our kitchen Absolutely. all the time for everything. Very handy, very handy. Then what we need to do is we need to put this here just for a moment to flour the board. And it doesn't have to be a generous amount unless you have a very very wet, shaggy mass. Okay, we're going to move that bowl around. All this right. is just a little bit of flour on the, on the board to keep it from Absolutely. sticking to the board because this is, a, this is a very wet combination. Absolutely. We'll do, we dump the entire mass. If you have a few crumbs, that's fine. We dump the entire I'm mass. I'm gonna love these, I can tell already. I am too. Right. So do you that. serve these as a breakfast thing, as an accompaniment for dinner? I can see these with a bowl of soup. As a matter of fact, these are your all-purpose scones. They go good for breakfast with eggs, bacon. They go good at lunchtime with a nice big stew, mm. Italian food, mm -hmm. any hot, spicy food. But you know what, the next day after they're cold, slice them, Put a big thick piece of ham in there. Big and have a sandwich. Really? Oh, absolutely. Great nice. sandwich. Great sandwich. Yeah. Turns a turns a sandwich into what I call a sandwich. Uh -huh. a little difference. Yeah. A little difference. All right, and now you want to flour your hands. And here's where the artwork gets fun. Okay. You want to roll it, and you don't have to heavily coat it, just enough to where it stays together. So you put the, the flour on your hands, not directly onto the, the Absolutely. The dough, right? Absolutely. Okay. Now, afterwards, you may have to sprinkle a little bit on the dough, but initially, you want to flour your hands and the board only. Then you want to gently flatten it. You have just sort of a puffy disc there. Absolutely. And then you want to just eyeball it. And cut it in half. And these, these are very good for this. Mm -hmm. cut, cut brownies, biscuits. Yeah, exactly. You can find them at any average grocery store's utensil and rack. I noticed you're very delicate with that dough. Yes. Not just just barely, barely moving it about. And that's going to make it really light and light fluffy and tender. Oh, and tender. Very nice. 
This will keep you from being invited to the hunting skeet show. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So now we have two puppy discs. Absolutely. And you know, you want to flatten them down to at least about maybe two to three inches at the most mm -hmm. to keep that consistency yep. nice and mm -hmm. tender. Well, yeah. At this point, you still can eyeball it. Just slice it right out. They may not be the and prettiest there we are. things. And you got eight scones. At that point, you have eight nice fluffy scones. And right on a papered sheet. Yep. There they are standing in a row. They already look good. They aren't even cooked. Get that over to the side there. Very gentle there. You want to space them, give them even spacing so they don't bake into right. one another. Of course, that doesn't affect the taste in it. Biscuits or stones cooked together. Well, we need some air circulation there, too. There we go. And there you have it. Carolyn, and then what happens you? with the butter here? With the butter, we uh, after they bake in an oven for 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes, after they come out, you want to give them a good brushing okay. of the So ah. these are going to go into the oven. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what we've got in the oven, folks? Just guess. The finished product. <laughs> Wow, look at these. Uh -huh. And now look what he's going to put on top. Just some nice melted butter. Absolutely. I can't paint a house, but I can paint a scone. Uh -huh. <laughs> this sounds like way more fun than painting a house. Oh, uh -huh. absolutely. We'll just get in here for a <laughs> little, little taste. Just a little taste there. A little taste. So, George, are you ready? I'm ready. There you go. Okay. Now the moment. The moment. Mm. Get the recipe. Get the recipe, okay? Just get the recipe. Don't believe me. Don't believe me here. Try it yourself, and then you go, mmm, like I'm going, mmm, that's mm, wonderful. Let me Wait see. Try that, Carol. Mmm. And light. Mmm. Isn't that good? Oh, that is great. And the, and the aftertaste, just a little bit of... Just, 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 just a little, little bit of... Just a little. Boom, you know? just a little. Get your attention, okay? 1-800-443-1999. Get the book, Three Try These. these. Your family will love them. And if they don't, you get to eat them all. That's the best part. Call them. Virginal, thank you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> that's fine. We're cooking.